You know what I like too is that this is not super dense and dry. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. scones are really dense and really dry. But no, yeah, this is moist and mm -hmm. it's light, but crispy on the outside. Perfect. Good oh, job. babe. Good job. Thank you for the big kudos. Thank oh, wait you. a minute. What? Mm. Okay. I have to get back to the yard sale. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hi you guys, I'm Amy and I'm in my little kitchen. So thank you for being here with me. It kind of makes it all the more fun when you are. So don't forget to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. I would so, so appreciate that. You'll find a lot more videos, recipes, you know, over there, including the one I'm making right now. Uh, a couple days ago, I made uh, strawberry hand pies and that recipe will be coming up. I loved them, in fact, they're all gone. My daughter and her husband are in town, and so they're off seeing, you know, her brothers and everything. So I still have some fresh farmer's market or a strawberry farm, because that's really where I got them. I didn't pick them, they picked them for me because I didn't have the time, but I was so grateful that they did. So I still have some left over and I, um, thought I'd make strawberry scones. So it'll kind of remind me of strawberries and cream, you know, type of thing. So anyway, we're gonna get going on that. In fact, this weekend is a garage sale weekend. Chris and I's first like garage sale ever. I mean, I did one at the farm, but you know, that was a little different than the neighborhood garage sale. So I told him I need a break because I was out there all morning and I want to come in my kitchen and kind of be in my happy place. So he's out there working the garage sale. I'm going to be in here making strawberry, I'm going to call them strawberry and cream scones. One thing about scones, it's very similar. I, I look at it, it kind of falls into a little bit like the biscuits, um, scones, maybe biscotti, uh, kind of shortbread cookies, but you know, cookies are a little more crunchier and a little bit more sweeter but it kind of you know especially scones and biscuits and so anyway i think this is kind of fun i'm always a trial and error here so i've got my little notes to help me along this time i actually wrote down kind of what i think i want to do so basically i'm just taking a basic biscuit uh recipe and kind of sweetening it up a little bit so anyway let's get started Okay, so what I have going on here is about two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. I'm going to add, I think, about a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, one stick of uh, cold butter. I'm gonna chop that up kind of really fine. And I've got two eggs here. I'm gonna cut up, chop up the strawberries, um, about a cup, maybe a little more if you want, about a cup. And then, um, oh yeah, about two tablespoons of sugar and a tablespoon of baking powder with a little bit of salt. And then after when they get out of the oven, we're gonna do a little drizzle of uh, confection sugar and a little bit of whipping cream, just kind of drizzle that over. It'll kind of, you know, instead of a donut, this is kind of a strawberries and cream, little sweet scone. So let's get going here. I'm gonna get a better knife for here. So I just need about a cup. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm going to chop up my butter first before my cutting board gets all crazy on me. So I'm gonna cut that in half so I can have little smaller chunks. And I'm gonna go as smoothly as I can. or smoothly, that was the wrong word. I'm gonna slice it as thin as I can. I don't know where my head was at. So yeah, we're gonna just chop up the butter here a little bit, half a cup. Make sure your butter's cold. I don't know, I just think it tenderizes and kind of gets those little flakes 
all in between the flour instead if it was just room temperature or really soft. But you know, whatever your preference is. It's kind of like, this is how I was taught. And this is how I've always done it. And I think they come out okay. So I've got the butter all chopped up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add the two and a half cup flours here, along with the sugar, the baking powder. Let's do a little thing of salt. And I think that's okay. I'm gonna use one of these to crack my eggs. Now these are farm fresh eggs. So I've had one or at least several experiences that I crack each egg in its own separate thing because farm fresh eggs, at least when I was living on the farm, when I cracked an egg a couple of times, all it takes is one for me, you know, it wasn't right. And then when I did it in whatever I was doing, I had to throw the whole thing away because I just cracked an egg in there, but ooh was not good. So that's why I do it one at a time now. I think someone told me that you can test an egg for that. I think if it floats, it's okay. Yeah, I think if it floats or something like that in water, it's okay. So I've got two very good eggs here, fresh eggs. Okay, let's cut up this, cut up the strawberries. And you know what, you can cut them however you want, but these are scones, so I'm gonna try, you know what, instead of this, I'm just gonna kinda cut them up individually. Cause you know what I'm afraid? Some pieces are gonna be mashed up more than others, and I don't wanna create strawberry juice. These strawberries are very, very ripe. They're gonna have their own wonderful sweetness in the scones. And I just want them in really tiny pieces. I don't, I don't want just specks of strawberry, but I definitely want pieces, but I'm afraid that if I cut all of these up in just one big bunch, like I said, I'm gonna get something else instead of just chopped strawberries. So if your strawberries are a little bit firmer, then yeah, feel free just to chop them all up. So I'm gonna try and get a cup or more, about a cup, cup and a quarter. Well, doing these individually is gonna take a moment. I think I'm gonna get this knife instead. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish chopping these up and then I'll be back when they're done because I'm not sure you wanna see me chop all of them up. I love strawberries. I tell you, anytime you can get a fruit or even vegetables really, especially tomatoes, from the farmer's market or obviously plant your own. They are just so much more tastier. Because I mean, they should be. You're, you're picking them lo locally. They don't have to be shipped anywhere, except just taking them to your house. So I'm a big fan of the local farmer's markets. A lot of people took a lot of time to grow good food. And I think the least we can do is support them. Okay. Probably have a little more than a cup here already, but.
So obviously when I put all the ingredients in the dry stuff, you know, it's, it's just a little sweeter of a biscuit. And I just really like working with flour with my hands. I just feel, I don't know. What do I feel like? It's silly, I know. I just feel like, man, I'm doing it, you know, like they had to do way back then without all the gadgets and stuff that we have now that makes life a little more easier. I'm just really into just touching and feeling it, I guess. Like I said, I know, call me crazy. But I'm hoping Molly and Joel will like these as well. I'll tell you the truth, I have one little hand pie left. I'll try and get a picture of them eating either the scones or the fight over the one last strawberry hand pie. I mean, this is an easy recipe. It's not complicated. That's probably why I like it. But I figured there's probably a lot of um, recipes out there for strawberry pie, which by the way, I think it's kind of hard. I didn't realize strawberry pie is a little different than if you were making a peach pie, blueberry pie. You really have to create a, a thickening for the sauce. So either use um, a gel. Yeah, I don't like that strawberry. It's too ripe. Like gelatin, a gel. Like gelatin or some or cornstarch, some sort of thickener. I probably should practice a little bit more on it. Since I find fruit pies to be a little more trickier so that when you cut the pie, you know, you get a good slice of pie. It's like cherry pie too. You get a good slice of pie. In fact, that's how I should make my strawberry pie. It's similar to what I make the cherry pie. I have to cook it, thicken it up, put it in the pie crust. Oh, you guys, I may be making a strawberry pie next on my agenda. And then save some of the fresh strawberries to put on top of the pie. Ooh, maybe I'll try that. See, it took me long enough to cut the strawberries up. My mind gets thinking on maybe something else. Yeah, Zach and Tori came over the other day. They wanted me to sell some stuff in the garage sale for them. And guess what? Lo and behold, their mama sold it. <laughs> but no, it was a good bike. Good bike and a high chair. Okay, let's see how much I have in this. Here's a little measuring cup. Hmm. I'll use this to scoop it up. I definitely have a little more than a cup, but I don't wanna go over it too much because the one thing these are very wet and ripe strawberries. I'm afraid that uh, usually I dust my fruit a little bit with flour, so that way the dough has something to adhere to. I'm gonna see what happens here, because these are very white, uh, very white. These are very wet strawberries. And I'm afraid that if I do add flour to it, it'll become like a little gummy. So we're just gonna go with this. Okay, did I give myself a fork? Nope. Here we go, here's a fork. Okay, I'm gonna stir up the flour mixture because I didn't do that yet. Okay, where's the butter? I'm gonna add a, uh, all of this butter, and get my pastry cutter that I just washed yesterday. Put that going in here. And you can definitely use a food processor for this. I'm just choosing to 
use my pastry cutter. Besides, my arms need a workout. And so you just wanna keep cutting into the butter so you don't have like really super large chunks. There we go. Sometimes all the butter and the flour gets stuck in here, so you gotta kinda get it out of the pastry cutter. And you know, depending, this will take you a few minutes. I just find using a pastry, pastry cutter, if you're not using a food processor, food processor, that this works a little better for me than if I were just to use my hands in this, but feel free to mix the butter and the flour with your hands as well. You just really wanna incorporate the butter into the flour. But I think the less that you have your hands on it, it doesn't like warm up the butter and melt it. And if you want your butter really cold and your refrigerator isn't quite doing it or whatever, I put mine in the freezer for a little bit. Okay, I think this is done. I wanna make sure I have all my ingredients in here. Okay, what do I got here? I did my flour, my sugar, my baking powder, my salt, the butter. Now I'm gonna do a half a cup of whipping cream. I'm gonna do it in here, half a cup of whipping cream. And a lot of people have asked me like flour. There's two really good flowers that I use, at least here. And the first one being King Arthur's or Bob's Red Mill, but I use King Arthur. Red Star Yeast. Um, oh, I'm using Tillamook butter because that's a local uh, creamery butter that we have here in Oregon. It's, oops, I didn't measure it. But any good butter or flour that you can find that you're happy with, that you've worked with, will do just fine. So a half a cup of I don't know, I find that buttermilk or whipping cream can kind of stick to it. Let me get another fork. Because I've got to mix in the eggs here. Here's one egg. Two Here we go. Make sure your egg is really incorporated in the whipping cream because I think it just help intermingle with all the flour. Bring in all of these layers of ingredients together. And I can smell like the whipping cream, this, the fresh strawberries. I mean, oh my gosh. I just love fresh fruit. I love summertime because of that. Okay, I think I've got this mixed up well. Okay, what should I do? I'm debating here. I am going to mix the strawberries in here so that um, they get coated with the dry flour and have an opportunity. Oops, I should use a spoon for this. And then I'm gonna do the egg mixture because you don't wanna over mix it anyway. But this way, 
the flower is touching the strawberries instead of creating a wet flower base with the egg and cream mixture. Okay. Create a little well. Okay. Just gonna kind of like fold it in here. And yeah, so it'll be a little sticky. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna get one of these. Make sure the egg mixture didn't fall to the bottom or you got a lot of dry flour on the bottom. Yeah, I think this is good. Mmm, you guys, this smells so good. Let's hope they actually turn out to be scones, huh? Get some of my stuff away from here. Then I'm going to make room to flour my counter here. Okay. Let's do this. Get all my stuff out of here. Okay. I had a little bit of flour here. Here we go. I'm hoping this will be enough. We're not going to use a rolling pin. We're just going to use our hands and just kind of free willing in it. Free, free willing it. I guess that's it. Okay, so I'm going to gently get this out on there. Of course, none of it, all of it doesn't come out. A little bit of dried flour, but that's okay because I think it'll be incorporated in here. I'm going to get some of my hands. I'm going to get a little bit more flour. Or my hands. Get that little bit in here. Okay. Just kind of pat it down. Just make sure got everything. Okay. It's a little wet, but I think that'll be good. I'm going to leave it for, I don't know, half an inch, maybe half an inch, kind of pat it down in a round circle. I hope you guys can see this. I might have too much stuff here. Yeah. Man, it smells so good. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just gonna clean off my hands a little bit, get my baking sheet, line it with parchment paper. And I think we're gonna be ready to go. Yay! Okay, I wanted you to just come over here, bring you guys a little closer to me. So yeah, I think this is about a half an inch, kind of in a round disc. I like the little triangles, but you know, if you wanna do it in a rectangle, whatever shape you want, or just even little round uh, scones. That's great too. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna wash my hands and cut these up. Okay, I've got my scones ready here. Depending on how big you want to make them, we should be able to get 12 out of here. 
a little sticky. So I'm just gonna flour this a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna try and get three. gonna cut it. I love this thing. I'm sure many of you guys have it at your own house. I know I had so many measuring cups. I really like, you know, measuring cups. Little, I bought this at an antique store. So cute little handle. I sold one in our garage sale. Not like that one, a little different, but it was nice and colorful. But, you know, there comes to a point where how many measuring cups do I need? Okay, my goal here is to be able to get this up with a spatula. And place it on the baking sheet. Gonna get a little more flour, just in case I need it for my spatula. Oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna get something else here. I'm gonna do kinda of like my pie thing. Cause what I don't want is to pull these all apart with the spatula. Let's see. Put a little flour on this. I might not have put enough flour on my counter here. So you just gently just gently lift them up. Now, if you want, you can put these in the freezer for about 15 minutes. It might help to solidify the butter and the dough and maybe prevent your scones, especially when they're wet like this, from what I would call spreading, which I may need to do. Okay. Doesn't matter, whatever it takes, because I think these are gonna taste so good. Flour my thing a little bit. Well, we'll see how these turn out because I might back off a little bit on the cream. Okay, where should I put this little one? Can I squeeze this little one in here? Okay, you guys, there we go. I'm gonna put these in the freezer for a little bit just so I can, it'll give me time to clean up this mess and kind of help the butter and the flour and have it all incorporated instead of possibility of it spreading because you don't want your your scones to spread. So let me go and do that. Okay, I did not have room in my 
freezer. So I did stick them in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. And, and I think that will help. I, I think it'll be good. Um, so I'm gonna brush these a little bit with cream and sprinkle just a little bit of sugar on it. I would recommend coarse sugar, but I don't have that. So I'm just gonna use regular sugar. So, you know, kind of make do with what you have. <laughs> Okay, so I looked in my pantry because I did not trust myself that I looked well enough. And I definitely have coarser sugar than regular granulated sugar. So it's a natural cane sugar. So I'm gonna use that as a sprinkle on here. But you guys kind of know what your coarse sugar is. You know, go to your grocery store and because I think it's nice to have some of those sugar crystals on here. So I'm just gonna lightly put cream because heck it's called strawberries and cream oops and you want to bake these in a 400 degree oven anywhere from 18 20, no, I'm gonna say 20 to 25 minutes. It really depends on your oven. Bake them until they're like a nice light golden brown. And there we go. Patted that down with cream. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this natural cane sugar on it. Even though I might put a little drizzle of just confection sugar. I think that'll look nice on the um, golden brown scones here. Okay. So, these are ready to go in the oven, 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on your oven. And, oops, as always, I'm gonna set my little timer because I will get distracted, go on to something else, and I'll forget about the scones in the oven until I smell them and then they're overdone. So anyway, I'll see you back here, about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, I took my scones off of the baking sheet, just kept them on the parchment paper, and I felt like here they are, nice golden brown. Because I felt like these scones were a little bit wet, uh, it did take longer than 20 minutes. So I probably had it in there about 25 minutes. So it just really depends on your oven. I think if you wanted to back off just a hint on the, um, how much did I add? How much did I add? Let me see here. If you wanted to back off on yeah, the whipping cream, I had a half a cup. Um, I think that would be okay. So if you don't wanna do half a cup, maybe do just slightly less than that. So anyway, but I still think they look good. They're gonna taste good. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a little bit of like a confectioner, confection sugar uh, glaze. <clears throat> I'm just gonna add a few drops if I can do it of milk in here. Just stir it around. Oh dear, I hope I didn't add too much. Just stir that around. I guess I don't know how to do just a couple of drops. This is a little bit runny. So I have maybe about a half a cup, two thirds cup of confectioner sugar and too many drops of milk. So let me start this over. Let me add some, some sugar to this again. Cause I don't wanna keep adding confectioner sugar and have way too much glaze than I really need. 
truly, it only takes a few drops of milk. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. I'm being a little more cautious now. <laughs> Because I don't want frosting, I just want enough that I can just drizzle it on the scones. Just a little bit more. Like I said, I'm being cautious this time. A few more drops. I don't think you need more than a tablespoon of milk. I think that's good, huh? Is that a nice consistency? I think it is. It's runny enough. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna drizzle some on. Doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to give it that little sweetness. There we go. Just a drop. Okay. thought about half a cup, two thirds would be enough. I'm sure it will be. Okay, here we go. There we go. Just a little bit of a glaze. And since we're doing this garage sale with our neighbor, I'm gonna take a couple of these over to her because she really got us into doing this garage sale with her. Because I really don't wanna overpower these scones with the glaze because I really want the strawberries to shine. These were very sweet, ripe strawberries. And basically, I think these scones will be a good recipe for like if you wanted to do blackberry or blueberry. But if I did blueberry, I'd add a little lemon to it. Maybe add a little lemon to the glaze. That would be good. Okay. Last one. Then you know what I'm gonna have to do, everyone? I might have to grab a bite before the glaze even like sets. Can I do that? Okay, I'm gonna place them on this plate here. Kind of like in a pie shape, how like Cut them up. Hopefully these will all fit on here. There we go. Okay. Let me get a plate out. Okay, let me take a quick bite of this, you guys. Maybe I'll wait till Chris comes in. Ooh. Hey, babe. Hey, hon. We're doing a garage sale today, so Chris came in, and I'm going to share some of these strawberry cream scones with our neighbor, 
yeah. who kind of got us into this whole garage sale thing. Well, I think we should taste test first. Oh, we have to. Maybe we don't want to give our we neighbor something bad. Here. Oh, yeah. Let me you just taste take it. A... Yeah. Mmm. Is it moist enough? Mm hmm. Because scones are like a biscuit. You know what I like too is that. This is not super dense and dry. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. scones are really dense and really dry. But no, yeah, this is moist and mm -hmm. it fits light, but crispy on the outside. Perfect. Good oh, job. babe. Good job. Thank you for the big kudos. Thank oh, wait you. a minute. What? Mm. Okay. I have to get back to the yard sale. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you can find this, um, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but I think I want to call it strawberry cream scones. But you can find this recipe for the strawberry scones over on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe. It's free, no cost. Just enjoy. I'm going to try and get out some, you know, unique things just for you subscribers. So anyway, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, strawberry scones. So this recipe and all of the other recipes will be there as well. So anyway, from my little kitchen to yours, keep cooking or baking, but still keep gathering in your kitchen or around the table. Good times. Thanks for joining me. I think I might have to do one, have one on my own. Oh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Good stuff.